Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at using the click track in Pro Tools. So we'll look at how to set up a click track, how to control things like the meter and the tempo of your session. And we'll also have a look at some of the other options that you have with a click track, like automating the tempo to change over the course of the song, automating the meter or the time signature to change, and some of the other options that we have for this click track. Before we get started, if you record and mix music, I've got three guides that I think you'll find really useful. I've got an EQ cheat sheet, a compression cheat sheet, and a vocal recording guide. And you can get all three of those completely free by heading over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. Okay, so I've just set up a new session. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add a click track. So we can do this in one of two ways. What we need to do is go to track. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can click create click track. Alternatively, the other way of doing this would be to go to track new and then add an aux track to your session. And then you would add the click plugin to one of the insert points. Now within this click track plugin, there are some options, some controls. So you can do things like change what the click track sounds like. But for the most part, I prefer to control the click track from the edit window. So we'll just get rid of that second click track because we only need one. And to be able to control this click track from the edit window, you need to be able to see this box here. These are your MIDI controls. If you can't see that, go over to this drop down box and make sure that MIDI controls is ticked. And it's from here and also from this ruler here, the tempo and meter ruler that we're gonna control our click track. If by any chance you can't see the tempo or the meter, go to this little down arrow next to this ruler and make sure that you have tempo and meter ticked. So these are the two places that we're gonna control our click track from for the most part. So first and foremost, now we've got this click track in our session, if I hit play, we should hear the click. Okay, now let's look at some of the options that we have in terms of setting the tempo for this click track. If we go to the tempo here, we can click this and we can enter any value hit enter and our session, our grid, conforms to that click track. We can also drag this up and down and that will change the tempo of the session. Now what would we do if we wanted to change the tempo of the click track at some point during the song? Well to do that, first and foremost, we need to make sure that we've got this little conductor icon checked. I'll come back to that in a moment. But to add a tempo change, we would come over to the tempo ruler and we would click add tempo change. That's gonna ask us where we want to put this tempo change and what we wanna change the tempo to. So let's say at bar two, beat one, we wanna to change to 170 BPM. Hit okay and it adds that tempo change to the grid. So let's have a listen to that. So you can have the tempo change over the course of the song. Now let's just have a look at what would happen if we turned this conductor icon off. You can see there that we then lose the tempo changes that we've added. We're then in manual tempo mode. And so again, you can change the tempo to whatever you want, but it's not going to carry out those tempo changes that we programmed in. Whereas when we then turn the conductor icon back on, we can now see the original tempo that we started with and the tempo change that we added. And so with that conductor icon selected, the tempo of this click track is going to follow whatever we program into this tempo ruler. Okay, now what would we do if we wanted to either increase or decrease the tempo more gradually rather than just going from one tempo straight to another? Well, what we can do is we can go over to this arrow next to the word tempo and we can expand this tempo editor. And if you come up here, you can select the pencil tool and you can then draw in your tempo change over time. Let's have a listen to that. And as long as you have this conductor icon selected, your click track will follow any tempo changes that you have programmed in here. Now with these tempo changes, you can go into the grabber tool and you can move them around, you can move them up and down. And also, if you want to, you can also delete anything out of this edit window that you want to. 
Now, let's say we're right at the start of the session and you want to set a tempo for the song, but you don't know what the tempo of the song is. Something that's quite useful is providing you haven't added any tempo changes in this editor yet, or providing you're in manual tempo mode by turning the conductor off. You can click on the tempo here and then you can tap the letter T on your keyboard in time with the music and it'll tell you what your tempo is. And then you can just click enter and it will set that tempo for you. Okay, next let's have a look at the meter. So if you double click on the meter here, it gives you this meter change dialog. And this is where you can determine what you want the meter to be and when you want that to occur. So let's assume that your session is the same meter all the way through. You would simply keep the location at bar one, beat one. Let's say your meter is three, four. Click OK. And that will change your whole session to that meter. Now let's say you want to change the meter at some point during the song. You can either double click here again and change your meter. So let's say we want to go to 4-4 four, four at bar 2, beat 1. Or alternatively, you can do the exact same thing by clicking this plus by adding a meter change. So you can place your marker where you want that meter change to be and hit add. But of course, it still gives you that location control, so you could still edit that if you needed to. And of course, once again, if you need to get rid of any of those, you can just highlight them and click delete. OK, now you might have noticed this count off option. This is a really useful little tool. And so to demonstrate what this does, I'm going to set up a track so that we can record some audio. So if we don't have count off selected, when we hit record, the session will start straight away. So we immediately begin capturing audio. Now, in a lot of instances, that's fine, but let's say you're recording yourself, maybe you're recording guitar, and your guitar needs to come in bar one, beat one. That makes it very difficult to hit record and then start playing the guitar straight away. So if we select this count off option, it gives us a two bar count in before the recording starts. So we hit record, we get a two bar count in, then the recording starts. So that gives you time to start Pro Tools recording and then get in position to start recording your guitar. We also have a couple more options here. If you double click where it says two bars, firstly, you can change the number of bars for your count in if you want to. So you could just have a one bar count in and you also have some other options here. So at the minute, the way we have things set up is we will hear the click track whilst we're recording and also whilst we're playing audio back. Let's just have a quick look at that. Okay, so we're now recording, we're now capturing audio. Now let's listen to that back. Okay, so we're now recording, we're now capturing audio. So we hear the audio being played back and we also hear the click track. Now let's go back into here and now let's have it so that we only hear the click track during recording. So now we're recording once again. Now let's listen back. So now we're recording once again. So now Pro Tools knows not to let us hear the click track when we're playing tracks back, only to let us hear the click track whilst we're recording. And then your final option there is to have your click track only play to count you in. And so now not only will we not hear the click track during playback, we also won't hear it while we're recording either. It's purely gonna count us in. And so as you can see, you've got a lot of control and a lot of flexibility over how you use the click track in your session. Now there's one final thing that I want to show you and that's how to have Pro Tools add a click track to every new session that you create without you having to manually add one. So if we go to Setup and Preferences and then we open the MIDI tab, 
Here, you can select for Pro Tools to automatically create a click track in a new session. So if you select this option, every time you create a new session in Pro Tools, there will already be a click track in there waiting for you. You don't have to add one each time. So hope you found all of that useful. Don't forget to head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads for that free EQ cheat sheet, that free compression cheat sheet, and that free vocal recording guide. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.